So this week was all about the aftermath of WWDC. We got to put all the different betas and all our different pieces of hardware from Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS, and even down to TV OS and everything in between. But there's also some other Apple news and tech related news that shouldn't go overlooked because it's extremely important moving forward. So without further ado, let's talk about all those different pieces of news and also some extra tidbits that we found out about iPadOS 26. Let's get into it. But now, before we continue, if you guys have enjoyed all the recent content on WWDC, iPadOS, and all the stuff that we've been doing, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment down below because it really helps motivate us to get more content out there for you. But let's continue with the video. So we all know that Apple intelligence has not been fully fleshed out yet. There's still a lot of app intent and contextual rules and being able to have cross app actions that are just not available as of right now. We do have some kind of lower level things from a user experience standpoint, like writing tools, Genmoji, and then some other Apple intelligence features that are being used without us even knowing, which I think is the ultimate intent for Apple, as opposed to having some sort of chatbot that they've been comparing it to compared to the quote unquote competition that they have. But there has been news that Apple hardware chief Johnny Suruji has been talking about how they're using Apple intelligence and other forms of generative AI to not only help out from the customer facing standpoint, but also on the back end when creating Apple's beautifully powered M chips, which again, they're kind of in a league of their own right now. So definitely expect the M5 chip to be used or at least have some sort of part of the production process powered by AI. And I think that's gonna be overall better and give us more powerhouses that is more efficient and at a lower price point overall when we start to get those M5, M6, and M7 chips. There is rumors that the new M5 chip is going to be put into the Vision Pro as the first and main device, or the second version of the Vision Pro. That all remains yet to be seen, but just know that they're using some back-end AI to really power and enhance how they produce and honestly code for these new chipsets. And then also expect to see it in Apple's A20 chip, which goes into their iPhones, which I believe we should be getting it with the iPhone 18, or we'll see exactly what they end up calling it at that point. But that is the first piece of note that Johnny Suruji did mention this first and foremost. And then that is a perfect segue to that customer facing kind of option of Apple intelligence in this new smarter Siri. Unfortunately, it, it's already known that it's been delayed until 2026. We are gonna be getting iOS 26 in the fall for all the public to play around with. But from an Apple intelligence standpoint, things are gonna remain relatively the same as to how it's being acted or used in iOS 18.5. The reason they're kind of slowing this down and because they wanna A, make sure that from a security standpoint, they get it right. And B, they want the user experience to actually be useful. And there was that interview by Joanna Stern talking with Apple executives like Craig Federici and how they were mentioning that they don't wanna just build another chatbot, ChatGPT. They wanna be able to have Apple intelligence be in their phones and in iPhones and be used in moments and instances where you do not realize that it's being used. And Apple's been using a form of this for years now with autofill and being able to kind of generate based on your use cases and your usage scenarios. So kind of having a much smarter layer on top of that is something that is gonna be very welcome overall. But then of course, things like multi-step commands, offline processing and deep app integrations, most importantly, those cross app integrations, which is something that I want, is still not gonna be around until 2026. I do believe it will come and we'll get to the point where we'll be able to say, hey blank, kind of look this up, put it into a note format and then send it off to this person where you're touching three or four different applications with just one command. That'll definitely come eventually and it'll be very useful once we get there. But from where we are right now, it's not gonna be there and Apple's made it know that this is more of a slow burn process as opposed to a instant transformation that happens overnight, which I'm okay with. Apple has been known, especially in the hardware space, to wait for other companies to iterate on it multiple times, have multiple generations before they even get to it. A great example is things like the dynamic island or the multiple cameras, or of course, even though their hand was forced, USB-C. And think about it, we still don't even have folding iPhones and people aren't banging on Apple's door to make folding iPhones, even though Samsung is on their sixth or seventh generation of it already. So. Definitely hold off. I do have some trust in Apple to getting this correct and also making it as easy as possible for the normal user to understand and get benefit from it as opposed to just having it be useful for, you know, the 1% of users that are kind of watching these types of videos. But now as a quick PSA on a lighter note, Apple is bringing back their back to school kind of sales and perks when buying Apple products through the Apple store. And this year, instead of getting some sort of rebate or gift card, they're actually giving us free product on top of your purchase. And this goes from June 17th all the way to September 30th. So if you buy a Mac OS powered computer, so a MacBook or iMac, you'll be getting a free pair of AirPods alongside your purchase. I believe these are regular AirPod 4s and not the AirPod Pros. 
but leave a comment down below if exactly what AirPods you were able to get. And then secondly, if you are buying an iPad, no matter the generation, you will get a compatible Apple Pencil. So if you get an entry-level iPad, I believe you'll get an Apple Pencil USB-C. If you buy yourself an iPad Pro, you'll get an Apple Pencil Pro with your purchase absolutely free, which is a nice little added bonus. Again, this is gonna forego the gift card situation that we've had in the past, or any discounts, but definitely, if you're going to back to school, go and purchase from the education store because that'll knock off at least $100 off the product. And then on top of that, you're getting a free additional accessory, which is great to see. And again, with iPadOS 26 being able to be run on that entry-level iPad, it's gonna be a match made in heaven, in my opinion. And now to some more juicy things, because I know that we're gonna get some new hardware at the end of this year, and that's gonna be that new HomePad that Apple, they haven't been teasing themselves, but they did tease it in the code with iOS 26. So iOS 26 beta code hints to a new display mode, which likely is tied back to a docked iPhone format, very similar to standby mode, or could mean a separate Apple smart display completely, which again, I think is gonna be that HomePad hub. So the way that I'm describing this to people is think of a HomePod mixed with a standby mode iPhone, mixed with an Echo Show, so you have a display in kind of a tablet format, but it's gonna be more of a squarish or four by three aspect ratio. You're gonna have this new standby mode or this new kind of alarm clock mode that you get on the Apple Watch, and it's gonna have its own kind of version of operating system, which I think they're gonna be calling it Home OS. So again, a smart hub for your home kit at home, a central kind of place to change your temperature, turn music on, control the intercom, a beautiful thing to have, which I know a lot of people are gonna jump on immediately. And again, think of that new recipe catalog in a News Plus app. A lot more of those types of applications will be coded for with this new Home OS app. And then lastly, on a more personal side note with iPadOS 26, I definitely just wanna give it its flowers, right? I've been waiting personally for, I believe, seven, eight years now for Apple to treat the iPad a little bit more seriously from an operating perspective. So it feels as if with iPadOS 26, you know, that my kid has fully grown up, right? The iPad can now do pretty much anything that I would personally ever need it to. Yes, of course, there are some nuanced changes and some nuanced, nuanced limitations, like being able to code on it, using certain applications, it may be not one-to-one -one compared to Mac OS. But for somebody like myself, who's really been trying to put a square peg into a circular hole with the iPad and iPad OS for years, and that looks like that hole is turning more square-like for that square peg to fit easily through, right? With the different traffic light design on the web browser or on any window, the new windowing mode, being able to put files onto your dock itself, and then the new multitasking features that it has, and the ability to just be a little bit more fluid, a little bit more nuanced, and just a little bit more precise with iPadOS 26 has been absolutely amazing. And we have a ton of coverage on iPadOS 26, which I'll link down below. I'm also working on a video comparing iPadOS 26 to Mac OS 26 to really kind of differentiate and define which user needs which type of operating system. Because again, both of these that kind of fit under a Venn diagram where they overlap now in an insane amount. I believe 95% of people can go to an iPad, can go to a Mac computer and get whatever work they need done or whatever content consumption they want done or any personal tasks they need done. There's that kind of 5% middle ground where people in the design world might want to gravitate to the iPad and then people kind of in the business world or maybe even also in the engineering world might want to gravitate to Mac OS. So definitely stay tuned for that video and leave some comments down below of some comparisons you want to see me do, whether it is on an app by app basis or something in the OS that maybe I should check out in each of them to see if they are available on the perspective operating systems. But let me know with a comment down below. But that'll do for this episode of Friday Five, everybody. If you made it to the end of this video, definitely leave a dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end of this video. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these right here and leave a comment of what your favorite update has been with WWDC and which betas you have installed. Expect beta 2 to come out sometime next week, and we'll definitely cover all the changes. Peace, everybody.